tone, tone, I, tone, you know, tone, tone. January 12th. Yes. Yeah. You're a Capricorn. I am. <laughs> what you about to do? And about to do my horoscope? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I just always attribute like earth signs, Virgo, Capricorn, uh, Taurus with people who are just so good with detail. And, you know, I never knew that until like this interview, but now it all makes so much sense to me. It's like, of course, you're, you know, you're, any series you've ever done have just been spot on and they connect to us in such a way because you're a, you're a details fanatic. You know, if you think about Harmony Kareen, who is an earth sign or Wes Anderson, earth sign, they're mm -hmm. all detail oriented. Mm -hmm. They're very, very, very detail oriented. And I'm not saying that like, you know, water signs or fire signs aren't either. There's just like a different kind of like, you can't fucking sleep if you didn't dot the I two years ago. Mm. You know, there's, there's, <laughs> you can't, you can't fucking even really concentrate if you didn't like cross the T two minutes ago. Like it's a thing that really fucks with you. Like you see that shit? Like that, all of that anxiety that just jumped in you just now? No, it's like, true. But mine manifests itself through interactions and emotions. Like I'm gonna, okay. I, I feel like I'm like, <laughs> I will wind shit back that I didn't do right. I still relive things that give me anxiety and pain yeah. from years ago that I do. And so much like psychotically so that yeah. I will rewrite history to make <laughs> to make it right uh that's that's wild what but it's but by the way it i'm an aries oh an aries but i have right. a taurus moon so my I house i operate yeah i operate like a fucking taurus in the house but i also <laughs> want to say to you that like your music choices and just the things that you choose to accompany your vision and yep. what an episode is of anything that you do. Doubt, yeah. It's like there's a there's a particular personality that like I feel like all of your fans have grown to love. And by the way, Spike Lee is the same way. I think he's the Pisces. Mm. But he's the very same way. Like his the musical choices, no matter what era they're from, you can always feel that he speaks for like his audience what his audience is going to like, whether it's old and it's jazz or it's new contemporary, you know, rap music. Like he always understands his tone very well. And I think as a Capricorn, while he's a Pisces, as a Capricorn, like you're just very clear on what works for what it is that you do. And I just also wanted to say that's also another amazing aspect about you. Uh, uh, by the way, compliment. aside from your fucking amazing skin, <laughs> can we just please like your skin uh, is like yes, forget yes. about it it's my dad and my, that's it like you said it's the senegalese people i got lucky lucky as hell but thank you thank you for that and uh like the spike the spike influence is a thousand percent real um just in terms of even seeing his placements and you know obviously can't talk about music placements without talking about scott but i, I feel like there's just section <laughs> it's 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 just another way to tell a story you know it's just a, yeah. it's a, it, it can be a handicap or an extension and it really just allows you to to say what you can't via writing and obviously sets the mood and you know you know that better than anyone mm -hmm. but it's such an exciting exciting part Look, of the story it's funny it, it's funny because i always um was really jealous of uh you know cure who gets to work with you because i've never actually worked with someone who is coming from the writer and director's perspective of telling stories with music. My music cues were my versions of telling the story because most of them didn't really care about the music. Um, That's wild. I, <laughs> and so I had, so I had to figure out ways to like be creative and make a statement just from the small amount of space that they gave me. Like you guys use uh, so many different, um, montages where you allow music to actually be a, a, a character in in, in the, uh, the the story and i've never actually worked on a project that allowed me to do that i was i was always curious about that because they had to play it into you later like even for entourage they had to play it into like oh, okay this is obviously a highlight of the show so let's let, let let's let it run with it or let's tailor it our well, show to it, it. 
where where that part came in was actually when the dialogue would stop and I got the end credits and that's kind of where people started realizing that the music on the show was good because the end credits always gave a statement in some way but that was just me that was the first time I ever did a music supervision job and I was just you know playing the music that me and my friends loved that's wild that they didn't care about it and it, yeah it was, I, I don't want to say that they didn't it was a different they didn't era, care I think but no but it's it's what the, like Doug Ellen it, when he writes he he's really good with dialogue and so his jokes were the most important part of mm -hmm. uh you know entourage so they write from a different perspective you know whereas you are probably sitting in front of your this is just me trying to imagine how you're writing but you're probably going oh i'm going to play this song this long there's going to be a walk-in scene and we're going to feel the emotion of the music in this particular part and then you're thinking of it from that creative perspective whereas i don't think when doug is writing in his uh scenes that he's thinking about the music For you know sure. it comes after yeah. it's an afterthought and it'd be always, you know what's always funny Scorsese uses music too, like the way he the way he works you on his tell. projects. Yeah, you, you know it's funny, tell. and I'm, I'm so glad you said Scorsese because I was about to say something that was probably going to sound crazy to people listening, which is skateboarders and black people are probably the same. Like we think about those things at the same time. Like skateboarders think about like what music, what track is playing while that dialogue is happening, and. You know, African Americans, we think about things in the same way. And before everybody get all pissed off and mad that I said it like that, <laughs> Scott was, Not you, man, Scott was <laughs> you know, Scott was psychic enough to say, you know, Scorsese, and it's true. He's not a skateboard and a skater, nor is he black. But I mean, you know, I guess yeah, you're right. You're, there are certain people who sort of think about like everything in totality. Did you say like Wes, era, An Wes like, Anderson? Like, Wes Anderson, I love his quirky quirky taste but i think about like era wise like new york undercover was also the first impression that i ever had oh, yeah. just like this is a tv yeah. show that damn they really use music and i look forward to yeah. the opening credits look every i look forward to see who's gonna die to whatever hot song was out and then of course and, the, the and th something something that people don't really think about is the reason why you don't see a lot of uh old hip-hop or even hip-hop in uh tv shows let alone because of the content of the tv show and there wasn't that many stories that you know it would lend itself to but also because there were so many writers on each uh hip-hop song where it was either a sample or four different people working on it that it it was a harder task for the administrative people involved and a lot of music supervisors wanted to take the easy way out and mm. you know do songs that were easier to clear because it's a lot yeah. of paperwork and that was actually something that like I never really did the paperwork. And that was something that I think worked in my favor of demanding that we get certain songs on there because I didn't I, w I wasn't responsible for the actual part where you had to actually go out and ah, license it and wait for that. all the information. So I'm creatively going, I need this song. Yes, I want Lucini Camplo. I don't give a fuck. Put it in, right? Figure and it that's out. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Who do you need me to call? I'll call them for you. Like I'll get these <laughs> yeah. people on the phone for you. So um it's that's just a dope. different way to think about it, but yeah. Um, so Isn't if you do an another question. show, if you do another show and Kier's busy. <laughs> you busy too. Come on. What are you talking about? Um, but no, it's so it, dope. It's such a great way to also, especially in this era, like, you know, as you guys know, put, put other artists on um, in a real way. Because given that radio isn't really breaking a lot of talent anymore it really is about like oh where did i i heard this song who is that uh, um and obviously even tiktok now is, is doing something just this yep. similar just breaking these artists so that's also part of the fun of just like sharing who you love to to everybody else who's watching um yeah i mean my the for me the drug was seeing how many people would shazam a particular song each yeah. week after the show yeah so yeah. Um, that was a fun part. Like, you know, in, Shazam was more so in ballers than it was, but actually, uh, I I've told the story before, um, when we played Led Zeppelin as the finale, the final song ever, final end credits ever on Entourage, it was the most Shazam song that they had. Damn. And the, and, uh, the publisher, uh, the publishers 
realized that the ki- people who were using Shazam were kids and they couldn't believe that no, th- none of those kids knew who Led Zeppelin was. <laughs> and because of that, they, uh, it was very early days of Shazam. And because of that, they realized they were being too precious with the music and not, and not letting uh, movies and TV shows use it enough. And the younger generation was losing touch with who Led Zeppelin was. And the publishers used it as an argument to the, uh, to the, um, the band to say, hey, we, we can't be this precious with the music. We need to start getting it out there. Other tone.